If you're thinking of doing the CFA, you need to watch this video because I'm going to share everything you need to know to make your decision, get enrolled and make the most of the charter. If you don't know me, I'm Harris, a CFA charter holder who passed all three levels first time with 90th percentile schools at all applicable levels. I also work in investment banking and studied at Imperial College London. Okay, in this video, I'm going to cover what the CFA is, including eligibility criteria, how much it costs, subjects covered, types of exams and career opportunities. So what is the CFA? Well, it's essentially the gold standard investment qualification around the world and it shows you're serious and have a thorough understanding of investing. So it's essentially like having a black belt in finance. You study a range of topics across three levels, including asset classes, portfolio management, economics, ethics, more on this later. The pass rate for each level typically ranges between 30 and 50% on average, which is quite low and means only around 8% of people pass all three levels first time. But if you can manage it, it can change your life. Here's some of the benefits. So firstly, career opportunities. The CFA can open a ton of doors for you to roles such as portfolio and wealth management, investment banking, private equity, and so on. It can help you stand out versus your peers and more on this later in the video. It also offers global credibility because the CFA charter is recognized all across the world. So it doesn't matter if you're in London, New York, Tokyo, etc. People know what it is and it can increase your chance of landing a job internationally. Then there's the big one, which is more money. Now it doesn't directly increase your salary. However, it probably makes you better at your job. It increases your chances of promotion. It allows you to access higher paying jobs in general all of which can contribute to higher income. And finally, networking. Now, being a CFA charter holder and member allows you to access exclusive networking events, get paired up with mentors, and generally join a community of like-minded individuals, which is very valuable in your career. Now, in terms of eligibility, there are a few requirements. So in terms of educational requirements, you need to have a bachelor's degree or be in the final year of your bachelor's degree. In terms of professional experience, you need at least four years or 4,000 hours of relevant professional experience, which you can accrue either before, during, or after the charter. And once you complete the exams, you need to pay the membership and uphold the CFA Institute's code of ethics and standards. And finally, you do need to have a valid international travel passport. Okay, let's move on to how much it costs. Now, immediate disclaimer, it's not exactly cheap, but you can consider it an investment in your future and I'll cover a few ways in which you can make it more affordable. So in terms of costs, you have registration and then potentially study materials. So let's start with the registration. You have to pay for each level and the cost varies depending on how early you register. So early registration is around $700, standard is 1,000, and then late registration is around 1,450. So on average for all three levels, you're looking at around three to $4,000. Now in terms of study materials, when you register for the exam, the CFAI actually grants you access to the learning ecosystem, which in theory has everything you need to pass the exams. However, it's not the most intuitive or enjoyable learning experience. So many people invest in using a prep provider, which can range from $200 to $2,000 per level, depending on which one you use. So this could lead to an additional cost. Now, if you're interested in knowing what I chose to do, check out this video that I've linked on screen where I go through my study plan. So yes, it's expensive, but here's a few ways you can make it more affordable. Firstly, register early. If you're sure you're going to do it, you can get it at the cheapest possible price. And trust me, those deadlines creep up on you. So get cracking. Secondly, the CFA offers a variety of scholarships which can make it cheaper or free. So check them out and see if you qualify. Thirdly, get your employer to pay. Many employers see the value of the CFA charter. So if you can make the argument to your boss or your HR department that it will make you better at your job, they may pay for it for you. Fourthly, consider secondhand material. So check out online forums or local CFA societies. There'll be people who are willing to lend or sell materials when they're done with them which can save you a ton of money. However, make sure they still apply to the current curriculum. And finally, and this one sounds silly and easier said than done, but pass on your first try. The cost of retakes can massively increase your bill. So if you pass first time, you can avoid that. And again, if you want help on doing this, check out my study plan video, links in the description. Okay, let's move on to subjects covered. Here, I'll give you a breakdown of what you'll study at each level and highlight some key changes to the curriculum for 2025. Okay, let's start with level one, which is all about the basics and building a strong foundation. So here's a summary of the topics you'll cover. So firstly, quantitative methods, which is basic statistics, probability, and financial mathematics. Then you'll do econ, which is micro and macroeconomic principles. Then financial reporting and analysis, which is reading and interpreting financial statements. Corporate finance, which covers the fundamentals of corporate finance and governance. Equity investments, which covers the basics of equity markets and valuation techniques. Fixed income, where you'll do an introduction to fixed income markets and instruments. Derivatives, which covers basic concepts and uses of derivatives. Alternative investments, which gives you an overview of alternative asset classes. Portfolio management, which covers portfolio construction and management. And finally, ethics and professional standards, where you'll go through the CFA Institute's code of ethics and standards of professional conduct. Now in 2024, the CFAI also introduced a practical skills module, which is a new hands-on module on either financial modeling or Python fundamentals. You make the choice, but both are super useful skills 
and a welcome development. Now, in terms of the 2025 curriculum, there's not actually that many changes. The majority of the changes to the curriculum happened in 2024 when learning modules were introduced to make the learning more digestible. There's also now a greater focus on more practical modules such as equity and fixed income, which is again a welcome development. And as I said, a practical skills module was also introduced. Now I've done a deep dive on level one, the link's on screen, check it out. Okay, level two goes deeper into analysis and valuation. Here's what you'll study. So again, you'll cover quantitative methods, which is more advanced statistics, probability and financial mathematics this time. Economics again, which builds on micro and macroeconomic principles. Financial reporting analysis, where you'll go through much more detailed evaluation of financial statements. Corporate finance, this time an in-depth look at corporate governance and capital budgeting. Equity valuation and analysis advanced techniques for valuing equities so this one's a much more thorough module fixed income is much meatier this time it's a comprehensive study of fixed income markets and valuation in terms of derivatives you go much deeper this time and look at more complex derivative strategies and applications alternative investments covers advanced topics in hedge funds private equity and real assets in portfolio management you'll go much deeper this time and look at advanced strategies and risk management and again you'll have ethics and professional standards which is similar to level one as with level one there is again a practical skills module this time you'll have the choice of analyst skills which is essentially equity research or python data science and ai again in terms of the 2025 curriculum there's not that many changes the majority of the changes happen in 2024 namely that all the topics could in theory be 10 percent i.e equal weighting which means you have to give all topics essentially due attention now previously some topics had higher weight than others which meant you could prioritize those but now as i said it could in theory be equal weighting. Okay, moving on to level three, and this is all about portfolio management and wealth planning. And this level has the most significant changes in 2025. So there will now be a core component, which is roughly 65 to 75% of the exam, which is the traditional content. And there'll also be the option of a specialized pathway. This gives you a choice of topics, which more closely align with your interests and career goals, which is a welcome development. More on this in a second. The core component consists of the following. So you'll have asset allocation, which covers strategic and tactical asset allocation techniques. You'll have capital markets expectations, which is essentially economics. And this will see you analyze and forecast market trends and conditions to form expectations about future returns of assets. Portfolio construction, where you'll go through techniques for constructing diversified portfolios with a focus on equity, fixed income and alternative investments. Performance measurement, where you'll evaluate and attribute portfolio performance. Derivatives and risk management, which covers the practical use of derivatives in portfolio management. And this one's a fun one. And finally, you'll have ethics once again. Then you have a choice of the following specialized pathways. So the first one is portfolio management, which is the traditional pathway and focuses on portfolio management in public markets. Then you have private markets, which unsurprisingly focuses on portfolio and wealth management in private markets, such as high net worth individuals, family offices, and so on. And finally, you have private wealth, which focuses on alternative investments, such as private equity, private debt, private real estate and special situations. So as you can see, there's a greater choice here and you can align this to your interest and in chosen career, which is a great development. And finally, starting in 2025, there will also now be a practical skills module at level three, like there is at level one and two, with the option of financial modeling and Python, data analysis and AI, which were also offered at level one, analyst skills, which were also offered at level two, and portfolio development and construction, which is level three specific. So in my opinion, these developments are very positive because a common criticism of level three was that it wasn't always aligned with your chosen career path. So clearly CFA have addressed this. Now very quickly, before I move on, if you like this kind of content and you find it valuable, consider hitting like and subscribe. I'd appreciate that. And if you'd like to see anything else, drop a comment below. Now let's move on to the types of exams at all three levels. Now I'm only going to give you a summary here. I've done deep dives into each level the links for which are in the description. So starting with level one, the exam is designed to test your basic understanding and is thus more direct and straightforward. So in terms of format, the exam consists of 180 multiple choice questions divided into two 135 minute sessions. All questions are multiple choice and each question has three possible answers. To do well in the exam, focus on practicing multiple choice questions to improve your speed and accuracy and also try to understand the underlying concept rather than memorizing this holds true at level two and three as well. Okay, moving on to level two, and here the exam is much more applied. So this time the exam includes item sets and each item set will have roughly four questions with a total of 88 questions. And the exam will be split into two hour and 15 minute sessions. Now in terms of question types, each item set will consist of a vignette, which is essentially a case study or a passage of information followed by, as I said, four 
The six multiple choice questions. So to do well in the exam, you'll have to be good at reading and analyzing vignettes quickly. So you need to make sure you read the question first and then you can extract information quickly from the vignette. And ultimately you need to be good at applying concepts to real world scenarios. And finally, level three is much more application and evaluation based where you have to think like an investor. So the exam is split into two sessions, each lasting two hours and 12 minutes. Each session includes a mix of item sets, which are multiple choice, and essay sets, which are structured response or constructed response, they might also be known as. Now more on both of these in a second, but each session will feature either six item sets and five essay sets, or five item sets and six essay sets. So a total of 11 of each type for the entire exam. Now item sets consist of vignettes followed by four multiple choice questions. So essentially like level two and then structured response or essay questions will require candidates to provide written answers, which may include things like calculations or explanations and so on. So there will be a command word in bold, which will indicate what type of answer is required. So for example, explain, describe and so on. So to succeed in the exam, you need to practice writing clear and concise answers for the essay section in particular, and you need to do this at speed without wasting time. And for the item sets, you need to continue honing your skills in reading and analyzing vignettes. And for both, time management is crucial. So as I said, I've done deep dives for all of these levels, including level three. So check out those videos. And I've also done a deep dive on exam technique in my study plan video. Again, link is either on screen or in the description. Okay, let's conclude the video by looking at career opportunities once you have the CFA. So the CFA can give you access to a range of high profile careers in finance. Here's some examples. So firstly, you could become a portfolio manager at an institutional investor where you would oversee an investment portfolio and make decisions about asset allocation, either in debt, equity, real estate, etc., security selection, risk management, and so on. You could become a wealth manager and manage the financial assets of high net worth individuals or families and provide tailored investment advice and strategies. You could become a research analyst within investment banking and analyze financial data, markets, trends, etc., and provide investment recommendations. You could become an investment bank and help companies raise capital. You could advise them on mergers and acquisitions and other corporate finance activities. Staying within finance, you could work in a risk role such as credit or market risk and work at organizations and help them manage financial risk. And finally, if you want to step outside finance, you could become a corporate financial analyst. So you essentially work in industry or you work for a corporation and you help them manage financial planning analysis and forecasting. And finally, I want to conclude with a couple of remarks on networking and leveraging the CFA charter. Now, networking is a crucial part of advancing your career in finance. The CFA offers an excellent way to network with and connect with other professionals in finance and outside of finance through local societies, events, conferences, and so on. Leveraging this can help you find job opportunities, gain market insights, and generally connect with other like-minded people and build relationships with key figures within finance. So alongside all the benefits from studying the charter itself, and all the learning that comes with it, don't underestimate the power of networking. There you have it, everything you need to know about the CFA Charter in 2025. If you like this, then you're going to love these two videos on the screen. Otherwise, thanks for your time and see you in the next video.